Good morning, Pilotiers. Aaron here from Honda Pilot Overland. Today we're going to be replacing that air spring that I poked a hole in with my Sawzall. So I've got this kit here. I actually got lucky and found an open box Firestone kit. The kit that I've been installing on my Pilot is the W2376041351 coil right kit. Uh, back when I was choosing which kit to run with, uh, these ones were the same diameter as what they recommend for the pilot but they were two inches taller and basically I just rolled with it the kit doesn't come with everything you need to install it in the pilot but it does come with the air springs and the hose and the connections uh, basically all I've had to add is a PVC cap for the bump stop and I don't think you would have to do that but it just makes a really nice resting spot for the air spring I've noticed that these new splined lug nuts, they really grab on. Um, it kind of is concerning. So the way I torque my, uh, my lugs is I tighten them most of the way with my ratchet and then I just go over them with my little tire iron. iron. And um, in the past, that's always been pretty good, but these splined lug nuts, they like to really bite sometimes. So I'm thinking this could have something to do with it. When the lugs are new, the part that seats against the wheel is painted black. And then I guess as you use them, the paint wears off. So maybe that's why they're grabbing on so hard. Maybe it'll get a little easier to take them on and off with time. <laughs> well, let's show you what we're working with here. So this is my tire plug that I've been using. Um, and of course, on my trip to Florida, it kept getting uh, shot out. Um, it's kind of been a little miracle that I could even plug it this way and that would even hold pressure at all um, because it, the hole is not a round puncture. It's a Sawzall blade tip that went into there. Uh, so that's pretty crazy. But so we got our K KYB shocks here. I forget what brand these these uh, control, adjustable control arms are, but I can tell they haven't been adjusted in a long time, so I might I might actually break some of those pieces loose before I take it in for alignment or else they'll tell me, they'll just tell me they couldn't align it or something like that. So these threads are not looking real clean. Uh, but basically we have our spacer and then we've got our PVC bump stop here. It just kind of slides and pressure fits onto the, the bump stop. Then we have our airbag. And then uh, below on this, uh, this control arm down here, we've got a hole drilled out. I don't know if, this, if you can see that. We have a hole drilled out for the hose to come out of. So I forgot pretty important step. I need to get my uh, pilot up on, I need a jack stand to be on the jack stand on this side. So. In the future, you should always start by jacking up on the center here, uh, right, right before the dip. You need the jack stand underneath that jack point. That way you can use your floor jack to manipulate the height of the uh, control arm down there. I'm gonna start by taking out uh, this bolt right here, which in my last um, axle repair video, uh, we actually accidentally uh, spun the captured bolt on the other side, the bolt, that, bolt that's welded on. So I'll have to make sure to get a wrench up in here, but we'll take out the top here, and then we'll take out the bottom nut here, and uh, then we'll move on See, taking out the uh, the ABS line there. Before we get any farther, I am going to go ahead and rinse out this whole area. So I'll move my parts and tools out of the way and just hose this down. All right, so I got the area under here looking a lot cleaner than it was. Um, I was able to free up both of the uh, tightening nuts here on my adjustable control arm. 
So I'm pretty sure that uh, when we go to get it aligned, the, t the shop will be able to get this to adjust easy enough. Um, I was able to get the top bolt out of my uh, shock mount here. Um, again, that was um, a bolt that I put through. Um, it wasn't stock, but we're gonna work on the next one down here. Let's see if I can get a good angle on it in the rain. All right, and this one I believe should be a 17 inch or a millimeter. Now, the way I get this mount off down here is I take a piece of wood and a hammer and just kind of catch it right here and hammer it off. I'll show you. You just put the wood on the shock. You just tap it off. Now, if I'm not careful, mine's gonna fall down as I undid the top shock mount. Already. There we go. And the ABS line it just kind of hangs down. You basically, just during this process, just want to make sure you don't uh, grab it and uh, you know overextend it or anything. This is pretty funny. So <laughs> I looked down in the uh, the control arm down there, and you can see there's a uh, one of the ejected tire plugs is down in there. <laughs> we'll get that in a second. So the next step is to take out the bolt holding the lower control arm to the knuckle. All right, you can just pull it out. Wasn't the most graceful thing, but we got it. All right, now it's time for a kind of fun step here. We're gonna drop the jack being careful to watch this line right here. Set it on top a little bit. And as you can see, the knuckle and the control arm are separated now. And the control arm just kinda falls right down. So from here, what I like to do is, for right now, get the jack out from under it. I think if I come this way with the jack, I could probably just pull it right out. So again, be careful for this ABS wire, but from here, oh, I messed up. <laughs> All right, so. The spot where I messed up is I should have taken the hose out from under my existing air spring. So I'm grabbing the hose right below and pushing up on the collar. Based on how this is going right now, I'm just gonna cut the hose. Um, I need to cut it with enough length so that I could get that hose out though if I need to. So let's cut it right here. All right. All right, and so if you rotate the uh, spring just a little bit, that will allow it to kind of pop out of here. Now with 
with a two and a half inch lift kit, this whole endeavor is pretty tight. But if you're careful, you should be able to just get it to all fit in there and work. Again, be careful with this ABS line. All right. So we got spring out. And uh, down in the bottom here, we've got one of our other plugs that got shot out of there. It's pretty funny. I'm gonna rinse this, this area out. Um, but if there's one thing to take away uh, when you're installing your Firestone air spring, uh, when I first drilled a hole for the hose that comes out the bottom, uh, I, I drilled it like just the right size and I tried to really precisely guess where it was gonna be, which is hard to do. I found that if you just drill the biggest hole you can, I mean, not the biggest hole. I mean, you don't want to drill out the whole thing, but just drill a big hole that gives this attach hose attachment point, uh, this macro fitting, uh, plenty of room to kind of sit where it sits, if you would. So let's take a look here at the top. So I've got <laughs> I've got kind of a funny arrangement going on here. Um, technically, I think I have over a two and a half inch inch lift because I have probably another half inch of spacers stacked onto my uh, eBay two and a half inch lift. Um, I think you guys know I like my pilot with a stance where it's raked to the front. I like it looking a little bit higher in the rear. That way when I tow, it sits you know level when I'm towing. Um, so let's take a look at the bump stop here. So this is just a PVC cap here. Let's see if it says the size because I forget the exact size. Two. I think it's a two inch PVC cap. Um, so you basically, when you're installing the um, your air springs, you'll have a bump stop down here. Um, I just unbolted mine. I didn't have to cut it. I just, I might have had to cut it actually because I think the bolt maybe was like rusted out on the inside or something. But um, you get rid of your bump stop by a two inch PVC cap. It just kind of pressure fits on there. Like when you're putting it in, it just becomes like a sandwich. But once it's up here, uh, with the air spring, it's not going to come down. Um, and yeah, I think that was a really good mod. Um, let me rinse out this area and then I'm going to take this air spring out. We're going to compare it to the new ones. All right. So over time, the old air spring has actually morphed and kind of shaped into this weird, like, I don't know. You can just tell how it's been sitting in the spring. Um, here's my sawzall hole that I poked in it. And again, it's pretty crazy. I could just tire plug it and run it with 40 PSI. Um, it, the only time I had issue when I, when I was towing the boat and hit bumps. Uh, but without the boat, I didn't have any issues even hitting bumps. Uh, but these things are really tough actually. Um, I was cutting out my sway bar um, back here, which by the way is incredibly hard steel. It's really hard to cut a sway bar. Um, and that's when I accidentally poked it. I was kind of being an idiot. And um, anyways, uh, I think just kind of looking at it here, I think if I squint and look at it just right, I think this will morph into this over time too. So I think we got the right size air springs. What's really cool about this is now I have an extra. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get the new air spring into the coil here, which is actually easier. The old one kind of morphed to where it like, you know, barely fit, kind of stretched out. The new one here pretty much just drops in. But yeah, I, I think we're definitely doing good on this. It's it's definitely the same size, so that makes me really happy. So I was a little worried about that. Uh, so one of the things we need to go over is how I routed the air hose. So let's see here, let me get down in the muck. So we have it routed, so it'll come up through this hole right here, and then it goes around. I don't know if you guys can see that. It goes around, up through this little shelf, and then it goes up into the body here. There's a grommet, Ugh, where is it? Uh, right there, actually, it's grommet. And you can see I've done some extensive water sealing on it with duct tape just kidding um, then it goes from there to the inside 
right here. And what I've done is I've put a T fitting. So this T is the, the airbag that we're talking about right now. This one goes to the other side. And this is the fill point. Right now I just have this little tiny uh, hyper tough Walmart air pump on it. And I actually just right now just run the power cable out and I just keep it partially plugged in. And because I've been leaking so much due to that, that hole in it, um, I would just kind of lift up this tray a little bit, see where the pressure was at. And if I needed to top it out, I could just push it in. Uh, so that was my like workaround for not having actual on bear board air. I will say though, I have been looking into what it would take to put a gauge, uh, with a switch that starts pumping air into them. And it's really cool because they actually have ones with a pressure relief valve too, to where you could on the fly adjust your, your ride. You know, if you were losing air, you could put some in. If you had too much and you wanted to let it down, you could let it out. Might be a little excessive for the pilot, but one thing that comes to mind um, is your alignment and your camber. Uh, when you're towing, you have a lot more sag, or like if you have you know a huge load in the back of the car and eight people, you have a huge sag and I know that affects the camber because you know the, the wheel is going to be higher up in its uh, swing radius. My question is how much does it affect the toe? Uh, because the toe is from my understanding what really will wear out a tire. So when I take my pilot in to get an alignment, my goal is to have it sitting with very minimal air in the air springs. That way they align it to let's just say a level height uh, where the front and the back are pretty much level. Uh, that way when I load it up with, with uh, stuff or tow, I can throw air in the air springs and try to maintain that same height that the alignment is good for. That way I'm keeping my wheels aligned to the best possible, to the best of my ability. So that's my thought at least. Um, the other side, the other air spring, it routes up behind the spare tire and then uh, kind of just pairs with the other air hose and just comes in the same spot. So it's pretty easy. The kit came with enough air hose to make that, um, you know, that much of a gap. So I'm just gonna use a razor blade and try to make a real clean cut here. There, that was actually a really good clean cut. So now when we get the air spring back in there, I can get it pressed up um, and try to get a really good connection on that macro fitting. Now comes the fun part. We gotta put all these, this giant sandwich of lift spacers and springs and air springs and everything. We gotta put it all back up in here. So put my spacer, my lift. So what you wanna pay attention to is where the end of the spring is because there's a, an, a recessed area in the, in the control arm down here where that end needs to end up. Make sure your car is on jack stands for this. There you go. So basically what you're trying to do is push the spring up over, there's like a ball that comes up in the middle. Once you do that, you're gonna wanna take your spring and rotate it until that end of the spring ends up in that recessed area. And uh, you'll know when it's there because it won't really move anymore. Now what I've found is when you start getting your jack back under this and you start lifting it up the spring is going to want to start bowing out more than it should before this gets flat enough to actually you know uh, be a sandwich so what i do is i take a ratchet strap and i i put a ratchet strap around the spring here in one of the middle links and i go under the car and i find an area to ratchet it 
and that keeps the spring pulled over. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up right now. All right, so what I've done is actually got it wrapped around uh, this area right here. Let's see if you can see that. This area right here on the other side. And then I have it through the spring here. Now I'm gonna take these, patch them together. right here This is probably another <clears throat> good example of where if I had the car lifted up a little higher, that might be all I would have needed to get this jack back under here. Sorry for the noise over there. Someone's using a tractor right now. All right, you guys see that? It's finally on the uh, on the jack platform, jack stand. Sorry, floor jack. All right, so what we want to do is make sure that everything's still lined up good. Make sure that the spacer is pushed up as high as it can and that it's straight. And then as we're going up with this, we will uh, make sure it, you know, goes where it's supposed to. Might be able to get it to stay right now. Let's see. All right. And then we just need to make sure that the spring is in the right spot, but I think we're good. So what I'm gonna do is just start coming up really slow and watching the spring and just watching everything come together. The, the strap is holding the spring straight where it would be kind of buckling out. Alright. Alright, looks like everything's coming together like it should. Now what I'm trying to do is get it to go up on that knuckle. Alright, it's going up into the knuckle. It's starting to really come together now. Now I just gotta hook up the ABS and put in the uh, hose from underneath and put the shock back in. Uh-oh guys, I was putting the shock back in and look what I just found. I got a crack developing in my knuckle where it goes down and mounts the shock. Started cleaning it up. I'm gonna go ahead and try to weld it, see what the, what the weld looks like. Um, I know that I've seen a couple other pilots where this knuckle portion breaks and the shock kind of comes loose. Uh, as of right now, if that happened in the field, I would just undo the shock from the top and just take it back in. Well, it looks stronger to me. Everything's buttoned back up, up top. The crack is welded, it has a nice big old blob of weld bead on there. Everything's looking pretty good. I got the ABS wire put back up. I was thinking about what's different from my car and potentially your guys' cars and it, it would definitely be the fact that I removed the sway bar. 
So the sway bar link is gone, uh, which would be somewhere in this area. Um, in the past, uh, the sway bars can be a real beast to get off. Uh, if you are having trouble taking them off, sometimes you just have to cut them off. And when you go to replace them, some sway bar links come with uh, the wrench fitting uh, instead of the Allen wrench that goes into the end of it to hold it. If you can get the ones with the wrench fitting, it's a lot easier to take them off in the future. Um, I believe the Moog uh, end links have that and they're probably the stoutest ones on the market. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go under right now and just kind of show you how the air tube goes up into the airbag. And then we're going to uh, put a little bit of air in here and check for leaks. All right, let's see here. So basically you need to make sure the end of the air tube is really clean and has a nice sharp edge. And then you just push it into the air spring as far as it'll go. And my air tube is routed up underneath this ledge and then up and out. And so far, it's been hanging in there despite all the off-roading and stuff that I've been doing. I am always uh, kind of apprehensive about you know this area right here because you can see this area clearly rubs the bottom. So one day a root could definitely get in there and just yoink it out, which wouldn't be good. But uh, so far I haven't had any issues with that. And actually it's been on my mind to try to armor this up, maybe make some sort of a cover that goes over this right here that uh, bolts into the sides or, or something like that. That'd be a good modification to make one day too. Alright, so we'll go ahead and push in my little tiny air pump here. Looking good. I've been really pleased with my air springs over their life so far. I've had them for a couple years now. And uh, other than poking a hole in one with my sawzall, they've been doing really awesome. So. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the next video.